Thank you. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our uh, June meeting of uh, Planning and Community Development. Uh, yeah. Could I please uh, get a motion to approve the minutes of our prior committee meeting? Uh, Supervisor Leggett, second by Supervisor Strau. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Ed, why don't we uh, yes, good morning. start with Ed. And I, I know that uh, we have a, a busy uh, agenda, thanks to my uh, colleague uh, Wayne here, but we will uh, move, uh, move right along uh, with this. I wanted to start off um, with the fact that you saw in the announcement uh, the closing of Web Graphic. Um, Web Graphic, uh, obviously for many, many years, was owned by Clendon Cohn and his uh, wife. Uh, they were purchased uh, several years ago. Uh, by Amsterdam Printing in Lippo, which subsequently was acquired by Taylor Company. Taylor Company, based in Minnesota, is one of the largest private companies in the world. Um, and they made an announcement the other day of 88 employees. So uh, what we have done is the Department of Labor has a rapid response any time there is a, under the WARN notice, uh, any time there is more than 50 employees, there has to be uh, the being reduced or terminated uh, has to be a notice <coughs> and Department of Labor is uh, working. We uh, reached out to Amsterdam Litho in Amsterdam to talk to human resources uh, personnel um, and uh, we contacted uh, some of our larger industries in the area and uh, we are working to set up a series of job fairs at uh, the location at Web Graphics. The first one that is coming up is with Finch Paper has gone up and set up a, a, a job fair right at the site at Web Graphic. They're very cooperative and we're now reaching out to medical device companies and to others to set up some job fairs at that location. Uh, Web Graphics individuals are uh, very skillful um, and uh, we feel confident, the human resource person felt that um, many of them uh, can transition into other jobs uh, in, in the area. So that's something that we want to turn around into a, uh, a positive. We all know that the printing industry um, is, is up and down uh, throughout our area, yet if you look south of Quad Graphics, Quad Graphics went into kind of a, a downslide several years ago. They have re reinvented themselves really more into the digital fields. They have now gone out and acquired, they've acquired in the last couple of years three to four small printing companies, digital companies, uh, and they are continuing to advance. They print, by the way, a Sports Illustrated, uh, Time Magazine, a uh, number of major ma magazines down in, uh, in, in Saratoga. So we're working very uh, closely uh, with Web Graphics and, as I said, they've been very cooperative. Sometimes when you have these announcements, uh, there's a little, little bit of uh, having to go back to corporate headquarters and, and go through that, but the Web locally here uh, in Amsterdam has been very good in, in assisting these uh, workers here, and so we're uh, uh, hopeful to uh, be able to get many of these people employed. Some are near retirement that may take uh, their, their retirement option uh, <coughs> that relates to that. Um, also, just to indicate where we are, this is a month uh, to month, uh, one year uh, apart, which shows that uh, from last year at this time uh, to this year, there's been a thousand new jobs created within Warren County. Um, some of those uh, relate to some seasonal work, obviously, with the tourism and the hospitality, but also for the uh, increase in the whole area um, in, in the uh, health care area as, as well in these particular uh, areas uh, as well. As you can see the graph um, indicating where the monthly job uh, report is. So since uh, this has been the uh, largest uh, employment uh, since about 2006 uh, in our region where you can see kind of the middle page uh, where it uh, capped uh, off. We had a uh, visit from Ec Economic Development Administration, Economic EDA uh, is under the Department of Commerce on the federal level. Um, they have funded a variety of uh, projects uh, through our area, so they were up uh, looking at uh, the tech metals off of exit 18. They also went out and drove by uh, the Queensbury Business Park, which received an EDA grant, uh, as well as other locations um, in conjunction with the Lake Champlain, Lake George planning. Uh, Lake George, Lake Champlain planning uh, is the contact for EDA. Any grants 
that um, are intended to be filed through EDA have to go through the Lake Champlain, Lake George uh, planning. These are remnants of the old day, and I think Wayne and I are probably the only ones that remember when every federal project had to go through Lake Champlain, Lake George through an A95, A95 uh, review on that. That's gone away, but EDA still has the remnants uh, of this one uh, program. Uh, with this area. We also want to just spend a couple of minutes on what's happened in the medical device industries uh, in uh, the Glens Falls, Queensbury, Warren County area. As, as we know and have seen in the paper, Angiodynamics has sold off the Fillmore's component of Angiodynamics, which essentially was the catheter business. They sold that component of 100 at $167 million. They also sold one of the two buildings that Angel has uh, off of Dix Avenue in the industrial park there. The intent of Angel uh, is to uh, move the manufacturing component to Queensbury. Um, Queensbury uh, is located in Angel Dynamics right near the airport. Um, and what they're going to be doing is they're demolishing about a 5,000 square foot component of the building and putting in an 8,000 square foot building and uh, having the uh, manufacturing there. Midline uh, is uh, about a $10 billion industry a year. It's a private company that's based out in Illinois. Uh, it was founded by two brothers in the 1990s. The, one of the sons, similar with the Gola family, uh, is a graduate of uh, Cornell uh, University, is uh, familiar with upstate New York. Um, and they basically, for many years, were basically the Amazon of a hospital supply, I think is the best way to describe that. Many of the hospitals in the area utilize Midline for the variety of the purchase of property, of, of hospital supplies and the medical. Um, in the last several years, they have been acquiring now a medical device industries. This is the third or fourth medical device industry of Angio that they have acquired. Uh, and that would, the, the medical device uh, of Phil Morris's uh, uh, areas of medical device in, this, in uh, those areas will remain in uh, Glens Falls at their uh, particular uh, site. You can see some stats when John passes this out to you. Uh, the, the company, it's a vertical company. They own, they have about 800 trucks that they own in the area. So that they are, uh, a, I think, a key component um, of, of continuing uh, for the medical device <coughs> uh, cluster uh, in our particular uh, area. And so what uh, Andrew Dynamics is planning to do is to really focus in on uh, new innovative uh, projects. One of the projects which has just received USDA approval um, in this country is the uh, non-thermal nano knife that would be utilized for the treatment of pancreatic cancer. Uh, up to this point now, the treatment has involved heat, which has a negative reaction uh, with pancreatic cancer. So there's really been no uh, devices that have been able to uh, relieve or to assist uh, in, in taking a, a really uh, effort at curing uh, pancreatic cancer or reducing uh, its uh, symptoms. There was a trial with some trials in Europe that uh, came off, but those cannot be uh, reported uh, scientifically other than to say that they did have good results with this. The intent, uh, if after approval of USDA, the nano knife uh, would be manufactured at the uh, Queensbury uh, site uh, coming up, and that's part of the purpose uh, of, of the reconstruction uh, of, of the site uh, up there. Additionally, because of the readjustment, Angio is uh, relocating 125 of the employees from the Dix Avenue site to the Travelers Building in uh, downtown Glens Falls. They are now going to be utilizing the ninth floor, which was the uh, floor that you could go up there and take a nice uh, view of the region, will now be uh, Angel Dynamics uh, going uh, forward here as well. Um, we had hosted our annual luncheon back in uh, May. Um, we had some uh, good speakers, uh, Ross from I Love New York, uh, Becky Wood uh, from Great Escape, um, along with recognizing uh, Bob, uh, Bob Black for his services to our community in the, uh, in the area. We had the sponsorships. Also, uh, there we go, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Wayne is trying to speed me through here. So, uh, the CFA uh, process is doing, I know Wayne's going to be talking about that in a few minutes. 
uh, here the uh, deadline is the end of uh, July and uh, we uh, are working with a number of uh, private uh, businesses through the county as well as uh, some municipalities uh, for, uh, for filing uh, purposes. That's, that's it. An abbreviated <laughs> form, form on uh, form on uh, yeah, and that's what Wayne does. Yeah. Um, what we would like to do, I wanted to abbreviate this morning, is to call upon Andrew uh, Meter, who is uh, the commissioner, as what they call it in the film business. Uh, the Adirondack Film Commission was established through a uh, modest grant uh, through the uh, New York State uh, DRI to the city of uh, Glens Falls. And uh, I thought it'd be appropriate uh, because this is another little niche uh, for Warren County economy um, in terms of the uh, impact that it can have over a period of time. And I call upon uh, Andrew to come up. And uh, there he uh, uh, yeah, this is a uh, clicker, but I, you know, if Wayne continues to control this, we're in trouble. Uh, I'll stand if you don't mind. My name is Andrew Meter. Uh, I know many of you, and uh, and I'm honored to be here. My apologies for being late. I was in Ed's office sitting around saying, where is everybody? So, <laughs> so uh, but I appreciate you having me here this morning. The Adirondack Film Commission was formed really out of the need to uh, support and attract filming projects in the area. We were having a little bit of interest um, and they were kept, they kept coming to Ed's office and they asked a lot of questions that he didn't know the answer to or they used language that was unfamiliar. Uh, so he called me and said, you know what this stuff, can you help us out? So we did that for a couple of years uh, just on a case by case basis when a, when a film would come or would, would be interested. Uh, we would help out and so we felt the need to start an official uh, film commission to continue to attract and support projects because it's very lucrative to the area. They bring a lot of money in a very small amount of time. They fill a lot of hotel rooms, usually in seasons that are not our peak seasons. So I'm just going to go over some highlights. Um, formatting is a little weird on this one, so I apologize for that. Uh, we, were, we got some uh, DRI funding to kick us off. That helped us create the uh, nonprofit. Uh, the attorney fees, and uh, and then we'll we'll continue to um, we just launched our website. We do fam tours where <laughs> producers or directors come up. Uh, we just did one last weekend for a Mack truck commercial, um, and I didn't know they did commercials, but that's great. So uh, they were looking for windy roads with mountain views, and we've got those. So uh, we do those. I help them find hotel rooms. Um, and their accommodations, catering, uh, crew. We're just trying to be the resource for everything and everything they need. And then on the flip side, going out and trying to get more of those folks to be aware. So I go down to the governor's film office um, in New York City and do reverse fam tours where I present the two uh, producers, uh, scouts, directors of the options that we have here. I get to know them and then a lot of back and forth happens from there. We just launched our website last month. It's filmadk.org, and we've got um, people can go there to view some of the locations that we've already scouted. They can submit a location if you have a if you have anything really. If you have a cool car, if you have uh, a, a house or a farm or a camp or a resort or a, anything, you can go on here. You can submit it to us, and we'll add it right to our locations database. Uh, and then they can ask questions and uh, see our different different locations throughout the area. So we are officially our nonprofit status. Some of you have seen some of these slides before because uh, Ed had me on a little, little road show. So <laughs> but uh, we got some DRI funding. Last fall we had a show called Viscus. This is a feature <coughs> film starring Mina Savari. Mina Savari um, uh, most known for American Beauty and American Pie movies. Uh, so she was a great uh, name to have in our area, and uh, that's her there. So they had a small budget, about a million dollars, the 30-day shoot, but they got 700 hotel room nights, and this was in a September-October shoot. They spent over $20,000 in catering, 50000 in local hires, 21000 in location fees, and another 163000 in other costs such as gas, non-catered food, vehicle rentals, construction materials. Um, and that's got to count all of the money that all of those people then spent 
uh, in our area. So it's, it, it ended up being about three, a little bit over $300,000 in, in direct local spend for something that was, that was here uh, for a short time. We shot at SUNY Adirondack, a private lake house in Bolton Landing, Prospect Mountain Highway, uh, an estate in Helix Landing, the Lake George Forum, which I should point out is a qualified production facility. And we need one of those uh, in order for people to get their tax credit through New York State. They have to use one of those, depending on how long they have to use it. It depends on how what their budget size is. But um, the Lake George Forum, and then we also have the Glens Hall Civic Center, we have qualified as qualified production facilities. So another, another way to, to attract people here when they ask. Uh, we just had the Travel Channel up here in April. They did a show called Call of the Wild. Uh, they were up in northern Warren County uh, and Harrisburg Lake. They were looking for $50 million. They didn't find it, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, so it's still there. So if you are looking for something to do. I don't think you were supposed to announce that, that they didn't find it. They, they announced that they didn't <laughs> find it. They the show would be over, I think. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, we just had HBO, just down the street here. Uh, shooting a show called Succession. This is one episode. Uh, they were supposed to shoot for three days. They cut it down to one, but they still filled 600 hotel rooms. They bought out the, what? the Great Escape Lodge for three nights. They still needed other hotel rooms in uh, the Queensbury Hotel, the Clarion, Comfort Inn and Suites, uh, several other hotels they used. Uh, we had 600 hotel rooms in three days. So that's, that's what we're talking for about. For one right? day of shooting? For one day of shooting, yeah. Uh, they spent about um, a little over $100,000 in, um, <coughs> in local spend in that in just those um, days that they're here. So that's why we want to bring more of this here. Uh, and then now they're looking the to come back in the shoulder seasons, especially in the shoulder seasons. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily want them to go away because they uh, there's hotel rooms during the week that we can fill. Um, so we're not going to discourage you know say no absolutely not from. You know, Memorial Day to Labor Day, you can't shoot here. We're, no, we'll still, we'll still um, try to accommodate them. Uh, two years ago, we shot uh, Radium Girls up here, um, and that was, had their world premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival in 2018. Uh, we showed it at our local film uh, festival uh, in 2018, and it won Best of the Best. And if you did go to see it, you see a lot of our locations there and people got very excited to see downtown Lake Falls, the courthouse in Lake George and Weawaka was where uh, a lot of it was shot. So uh, people got very excited and t especially they saw a lot of local actors and, and folks that were background, um, background in it. <coughs> we shot another uh, feature film called Spy Intervention the following year. And uh, you know, when they shoot it takes a long time for it to get out in the public especially a feature film. You have post-production of months, and then they try to sell it, unless it's already sold before they start making it, which is a different model. But this one is now in the, even though it was shot in 2017, or no, 2018, um, they are trying to sell it and trying to get either a, a distributor or a Netflix or an Amazon to, to purchase it. And I believe that is it for me. I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has. It's super delightful. Uh, it's on your webpage, <coughs> Greater Las Falls area. How big yeah. is that? So uh, it's vague on purpose, uh, and it's because there's no film offices uh, north of Saratoga. So right now our focus is uh, Warren County with a little bit of Washington County. Um, but if somebody needs something over a border, there's no walls, and we'll will provide that. So that's uh, the greater Glens Falls area is because we originally were funded uh, through the DRI. So, uh, but then we we kind of go out until somebody tells us some stuff. Very good. Thank you, Andrew. We appreciate it. You know, it, it clearly is a, is a motivator for, you know, our restaurants, our, uh, you know, people that are uh, just uh, Closer, closer to us. Okay, so we we appreciate the support, and I think uh, I think the general public maybe doesn't quite appreciate the the economic boost that uh, something like this can give uh, you know our local community. So so thank you for the presentation. I appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Very good. Is it Sarah or? Well, is Ed done? Yes, I am. Yep. Holy mackerel.
That was record time. A <laughs> um, couple things I'd just like to talk about first before we get into uh, the meat of the agenda, and that's going to be Sarah will be handling that. Um, on the 12th of this month, uh, Beersley Associates uh, came to Warren County and did their final uh, presentation and uh, deliverable of uh, their engineering assessment of, of countryside. Uh, Commissioner Hanchett was there um, along with some others. Um, I think it spells out what the needs of that facility are and I'm going to leave it to the commissioner to bring it to his committee to talk about, but um, that is done. There are some short-term needs that, that do need to be addressed. Um, and that's a decision for that committee to, to handle. Um, the, uh, the bulk of, the, of this meeting I'm going to let Sarah handle, although I, the one thing that's not on here is briefly, Sarah, I'd like you to talk about at some point during the, the meeting the uh, capital improvement plan. And, and Brian asked that we hold off until I'd love to do that. Okay. All right. Be that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll turn it over to Sarah. Okay. So the first thing that we have is a resolution request attached um, to transfer funds from GIS salary part-time to GIS salary full-time. This is just, I believe, a clerical error in the budget. Uh, it went from part-time to full-time during the budget process, and I think it just ended up in the wrong code, so there's no change in dollar amount. but. Thank you, Sarah. We have a motion by I'll Supervisor Simpson, right. second by Supervisor Wild. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we are just going to spend a um, few minutes going through um, our preparations for 2020 census, which is coming up in less than a year, um, and then uh, briefly discussing some of the grant applications that we've well, all of the grant applications that we've either recently submitted for Smart Growth or will be submitting um, as part of the CFA application round on July 26th. So uh, I'm just going to briefly start with the census coming up um, in uh, less than a year. So over the course of the past couple of years, um, the GIS department has been involved in two major geography undertakings, which you've heard us talk about in the past. One was the local update of census addresses, where we reviewed every single address in the county um, and compared what the Census Bureau has on record with our records and made corrections. We also recently completed PSAP, which was a review of the census geography, so the block groups track. Um, and uh, we, we had only one minor update. Um, we were happy with what the Census Bureau had come up with, and it's mostly the same as what the 2010 census was. Uh, starting this fall, we'll be participating in a new construction program, which is basically to capture all um, new construction since when LUCA ended um, up through Census Day, April 1st, 2020. So we'll be working on that over the fall. Um, we also uh, recently had a um, conference call with an outreach coordinator from the Census Bureau and discussed the importance of establishing a complete count <coughs> committee for Warren County. So it's critical that we get a full count in this 2020 census coming up April of next year. The census is a nationwide count of every person living in the United States. It's used to determine our representation in government, so it determines how many um, representatives we get in the House of Representatives. Also, there will be major redistricting done after the 2020 census. We want to make sure that we're getting our share in Warren County. It determines a huge billions and billions of dollars of distribution in state and federal funding. Um, so it's imperative that we make sure that we have a full count, that we're not missing people. Uh, many of our planning decisions at the local level as well as the state and federal level are made based on census results. Right now, the Census Bureau uh, issues annual population estimates 
the Census Bureau has estimated in 2017 that we're losing population. Um, so some of these numbers are questionable. <laughs> Congratulations, Oregon. <laughs> I'm not sure how trustworthy that is. But the overall message here, I think, is that the Census Bureau believes that Warren County is losing population. Um, it's critical that we get a good count. The Census Bureau also issues estimates of non-response rates. These are based on a combination of demographic analysis and response rates in the 2010 Census. So I think we want to make a concerted effort to um, concentrate in areas that the Census Bureau is projecting to have low response rates. We can see over in the western part of the county, there's a lower response rate. Also in the city of Glens Falls, a couple of the wards in the city of Glens Falls have an over 20% non-response rate in the 2010 census. So a couple hard to reach populations that we can focus on. One interesting fact that I didn't know um, before we had our outreach call with the uh, Census Bureau was the zero to five population. Um, it has a very low response rate. Obviously, it's the parents who are responding for that zero to five population, but historically, um, there have possibly been assumptions made by parents that they don't need to fill out the census for that population, but it's critical because each one of those toddlers, babies, are a person who are I impacting our funding, um, and as well as school planning, all sorts of planning. Uh, requires that we have an accurate count. So we'd like to try to do some outreach to Head Start, preschools, um, elementary schools, try to make sure that we're getting a full count of that age group. Also renters, I think that's one of the reasons that we see a um, high response rate, in, uh, low response rate in a couple wards in Glens Falls. We have a very high renter population in those wards. So we want to make sure that we do some outreach to try to get a full response from renters as well as Homeowners. Supervisor Leggett, yes. So Sarah, does that mean people don't get counted or do they estimate in, in the absence of having responses? Um, they estimate, but obviously having a better count, uh, having an accurate count is better. So I'm going to go through what the um, timeline is for the Census. So the Census Bureau makes a concerted effort to, to get a response from everybody. Um, so basically, starting this fall, as I mentioned, we've already been preparing for the last year or two, um, but starting this fall, the GIS office <laughs> will be participating in the new construction program. We'll be working with the town, George Hilton and the town of Queensbury as well. Uh, also starting this fall, the Census Bureau will begin an address field verification um, process. They'll use local employees. Um, so they estimate that throughout the census process from the fall of this coming year through April of 2020, they're going to need somewhere between 200 and 250 employees. They like to use local employees to pay $17 an hour. People can use their own vehicles. They'll get reimbursed for mileage. You have to be 18 or older and a U.S. citizen. The hours are flexible, so um, we're thinking that this may be a good summer or, you know, I don't know college student job for next summer. Um, I don't know what, how we're going to fill that <laughs> job requirement in the fall. They'll bring people in if they need to. They prefer to use local people, but if they can't get enough, they'll, they'll bring people in. So in March of next year, um, the Census Bureau will send postcards to most homes. So most response will be mail response or online response. We do have several areas in the county that don't have mail delivery, mostly the seasonal houses, Lake George, Bolton, Hay, probably some in Horkin as well, a little few areas in Johnsburg um, where it will be an in-person delivery of the questionnaire. One thing that's changing from the 2020 census um, since the 2010 census is there, there's an option to complete the census online or on the phone. So during that March 12th to 20 time period, um, most people will, will receive a letter with information and a link to fill out the census online. Some people, based on what the Census Bureau estimates as poor internet 
connectivity or a more elderly demographic that's less likely to um, be comfortable with completing the census online, um, they'll be mailed surveyed. It, if there's no response, uh, a second mailing, a reminder letter will be sent out that third week in March, then another reminder postcard, um, then if to the continued non-responders, there'll be a, a letter plus a paper questionnaire, then another follow-up postcard. Also during that time frame, April and May, enumerators will be delivering questionnaires to households that don't have mail delivery. So this will just be dropping the census questionnaire off to those houses that don't have mail delivery. Um, we did ask the uh, outreach coordinator about seasonal residents. She said if people are living, they should fill out um, the questionnaire for where they're living as of April 1st, April, May time frame. So even if they have another house somewhere else they live in, for, the, for most of the year. If they're here in April, May, June, they should fill out the census here. And we're all back. back. We need a promotion. <laughs> so May through July, enumerators in person will conduct non-response follow-up. So the goal here is to get 100% response and so as you can see, there's going to be multiple follow-up mailings, postcards, and then there will be in-person follow-up as well. So there's a lot of effort put into getting a complete count. Um, obviously, the best thing to do is, would be to get a high response rate to the online and mailed questionnaires. Okay, any questions? I do have a question. The 20% uh, uh, non-response rate uh, in the city of Glens Falls, that would really concern me. That's a, yeah. that, that to me is a huge number, yeah. statistically. Uh, uh, the two wards in the city, what, what are the two wards? Uh, I think it was four and first. The third ward also had a fairly high non-response rate, which was surprising really? to me. Claudia, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, come on. Right on, exactly. <laughs> So I think uh, we'll be try we'll be establishing a committee uh, in the coming months. We'll try to get involved, get local organizations involved, especially for the uh, hard to reach yeah. population. Bear, bear with me for one moment. The the methodology of you know all of a sudden you're you're the census person getting the information. You knock on a door. It's a duplex. Uh, it's uh, two bedrooms on each side. What do we just we can't get to this person do we do we estimate at that point is that is that the methodology do we kind of say oh two people on each side three people on each side no I don't think so no no I think um, the Census Bureau handles all of the estimating that's done so I think the job of the enumerator is just to collect what they okay. can actually accurately co but, collect but they're not estimating but if, if we're taking a, a, a ward in the city and missing 20% of those folks, that that's a serious issue. <clears throat> yep. It's been higher in p past years, and I, I think one of the keys is trying to get local individuals out there because I've had experiences in the past when we've been short on this, um, they really don't have a feel for the area. Now it's improved with GPS and so forth. But they, they, they um, are, are not that familiar, particularly as we head in the North Country, um, where to go. So I, I think it uh, really is important to, particularly with all of the apartments downtown, mm -hmm. uh, the transient nature of some of them, uh, Mr. Chair, as well as in the North Country. If we don't have local people involved, we're not going to get a very good uh, count uh, throughout, our, throughout our county. And this is important uh, for a number of reasons that Sarah has uh, talked about in terms of uh, federal and uh, state aid to do this. Supervisor Citizen, then we'll go to the chairman. Yeah. Sure, I was wondering if you could send out that timeline and the information sure. now. Yep, absolutely. Maybe. I can send everybody out a link to the presentation if you want. And then we have some additional materials from the Census Bureau as well. This also is an interactive um, map mm -hmm. viewer, which I can send a link out yep. to people um, so you can kind of 
zoom into your particular area and get a better sense of what the demographics are in the, the lower response areas. Yeah, I just like to yeah. it. So you're going to send it to all of us? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. The it's tracking is not the right people because the capital like region <coughs> is difficult because you initially you look at the numbers and they, don't, and and they that really don't go out. Right. Like I've seen that. I don't that's the that total number of households which you know, uh, include a lot of non-resident households. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you, so for example, you might at a certain point in time expect to see something like 60 or 70 percent. You see something that looks like 25 or 30 percent. And are they doing anything different this time to uh, relative to that, um, that tracking, you get those um, tracking periodically, you get those tracking reports. Yeah, I'll send out, so they actually have another um, map viewer as well that uh, shows which areas are, they're expecting mail response versus which ones are um, home delivery and so they have a number, you know, technology has changed quite a bit in the last 10 years so um, I'll, I'll send that back and it kind of breaks down the mail-in response rate versus in-house delivery response rate and all of that kind of information. So. Like Bulk, there might be, for example, Bulk, might be 2,400 households, uh, 1,000 of those households are not year-round residents. Yeah. They declare somewhere other, other yeah. place as their place of residence. Yeah. So when you get the periodic reports and they come through, you feel like the response rate is very low, but that's been calculated. It used to be, I don't know if it is now, it used to be calculated against the total households that they believe exist within the municipality. Yeah, they, they definitely accommodate um, the seasonal nature. I'm not sure what the reports will look like as we go through the process. We didn't discuss that with the outreach coordinator, but I'll see My if I can find it, out. It makes it difficult to track in a more seasonal community exactly where you are in that process because you, yeah. they only know because they're delivering the census to every household, yeah. right? You've identified right. all the households, yeah. whether they're resident households or not. Right, so right. We're going to have a lot of people who aren't here April 1st. So. <laughs> Uh, Supervisor Wild and then Wayne. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. So I think it's, it's not really a question for you, it's for me, our budget officer. And Frank, if you don't mind, if, if our census drops by 10%, what happens to our revenue streams? Are we going to lose 10% of our revenue streams also? I would think so. One thing, probably, uh, your taxes will go up. I'm just thinking in terms of any kind of, um, you know, federal. Okay, so it's not a not a big concern for us in terms of the budget. Okay. I think if there's a drop more than 10 or 15 percent, then 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 it does have an impact. Um, this has been a major complaint in large urban areas, city of Albany, city of Schenectady, Detroit, where there's been their arguments has been consistently uh, under evaluated as well in New York City. Um, and that's been a, a, a take in terms of uh, value the number of people in, in New York State. And so I, I think in the past we've kind of relied on the census to really handle this whole affair. Right. And I, I think that the locals, meaning the county and the communities, have to get more involved just to verify these uh, numbers because a 20 to 25 percent drop in any community is, uh, you know, substantial. Now, in some areas, that may help by having a lower uh, level and depending on the income level. It might actually help in a, in a positive way, but in, in urban areas, overall, there is a formula uh, for community development and so forth where it wouldn't be exactly a 10% reduction in because you have a 10% cut, but there would be an effect uh, by that, popu you know, that population. Do you have something, Mike? Yeah, um, two things that I want to bring up. Um, I think part of this whole outreach and education process, and Sarah, I'd ask you to talk to this uh, a little bit more, is how the information will be used. Because there's a uh, misconception out there that this information in the census gets shared with other government agencies, and, and uh, I think that's a concern with some people that fill this out, and, and that's not the case. They cannot share it. But um, And just on the totally separate side note, that we neglected to do. I'd like to introduce Amanda Beck, 
she is uh, the new planner in the office, new as in four or five months, but this is her first meeting here. So be kind to her um, and don't scare her away from this meeting. But um, I just you know, wanted to, to make sure that the committee was introduced to Amanda. Thank you. Welcome, Amanda. So, sir, if you could talk about how this is used. I know you had a discussion on that, or, or was um, that at AATV? Oh, uh, Matt left. Okay. Yeah, just to reiterate, this, the, all of the data collected is uh, protected by federal law. So it can't be shared with other agencies. There's been lots of concern about the citizenship question. Um, any data collected legally and by many, you know, established, well established by court precedents is not, uh, cannot be shared with other federal, state, local agencies. It's uh, completely confidential. So we'll get this data um, back. Uh, March of 2021, we'll get some preliminary data used for the redistricting process for determining how the legislative districts, um, how many representatives we'll get for the state of New York. Um, that data will be to us a year after the census is completed. The more detailed data, demographic data, income data, housing, population, um, breakouts as far as race and age and all of that kind of stuff will follow in 2022. So we use that extensively for grant applications, for planning. Um, I think anybody who's ever submitted a grant application has got to include some sort of demographic information. So. It, it, I do tons of stuff with census data, uh, and it's good to have it be as accurate as it possibly can be. So it's worth putting some effort in in the beginning. And I did want to mention one other thing um, Ed mentioned about how it's important to have local enumerators who are familiar with the area. One thing that was very different about this year's um, census prep was the LUCA project, which I know I've talked about in the past, but that review of every single address in the county. The Census Bureau going into the census has a point for every single address, including apartments in Glens Falls. Um, I don't believe that was the case the last time around. So their data is as accurate as we had time to make it um, during our three month review process. So I feel fairly confident going in that the enumerators and the Census Bureau do have good locations for every single residential structure in the county, or 98% of them, I guess, you know. Um, so, anyway, moving on, uh, we wanted to do a brief overview of the applications that we're planning to submit through the CFA process. Um, as Ed mentioned, the applications are due July 26th, and we're planning to submit Four o'clock. a number of them. <laughs> um, so this first one is, um, I don't know if Wayne wants to talk about this, this is for the black hole in Johnsburg. It's, this is a resubmission of uh, something that was not funded last year. Uh, the matching funds are uh, through the value of the donation to the town, um, so there's no capital outlay. Um, we've been requested by the town to pursue this. so. Uh, it's in our first wilderness plan, so we're uh, bringing that forward. All right, the next one is another LWRP um, application. This is Lake George Water Quality Improvement. This is Chris is submitting this application, so I will turn it over to him. Yeah, so um, we're putting in um, a number of projects for the communities in the Lake George watershed. Um, really kind of a milestone for those communities because uh, despite all the problems they've had this year those communities are coalescing to uh, put, a, put an application uh, in together so um, the first project I want to talk about are some improvements to stormwater down on BD Road which is down next to the garrison um, the, uh, the, the, the existing drainage channel uh, kind of comes off 9L and makes its way over to Eastbrook uh, to bail out of Eastbrook and dumps into the lake. Uh, the town of Lake George is going to be uh, applying for some funding for some engineering, uh, and we want to use uh, we we want to uh, put in for some funding for uh, the construction side of things. 
uh, to uh, make sure that the water that is making its way into Lake George is uh, the cleanest it can be. It's also been an area of uh, interest for uh, the E. coli breakout on Million Dollar Beach. So, um, and there's been some uh, high hits for E. coli um, in the drainage channels over there. So, we're hoping that the improvements that can be made here can address both stormwater and uh, issues with, uh, with, waste, with wastewater. This, um, the village of Lake George, um, aside from their uh, sewer plant, um, they'd like to make some upgrades to their stormwater infrastructure as well. Uh, they're doing, they want to do uh, design and construction of some improvements over on the Schuyler Heights neighborhood, which is over uh, kind of below the village hall, and having some, some, some ponding issues and so on. And then under the Escal Street, there's a box culvert, uh, probably about 80 years old, and the bottom of it has been eroding away. So there's been some sediment uh, making, finding its way into Lake George, as well as some sinkholes uh, and in the road above this culvert because of that deterioration. So um, we'll be putting in for some funding to um, do some design work so the village can uh, make those improvements in the future. <coughs> uh, this is a project for the town of Queensbury. Uh, I've been talking about it for probably over a decade now, um, about establishing a sewer. Uh, a, a community sewer district up on Rock for, for Rockhurst, and because uh, the uh, there, there's been some some land made available by a property owner over there, um, that the town wants to move ahead with doing some final engineering for the site uh, to establish that system. Um, up in Bolton, uh, the, the the town is looking to make some upgrades to their pump stations down. Um, down near the waterfront, most, no most notably the pump station down by uh, uh, Rogers Rock Park, uh, where the pump station is approximately 35 feet from the lake, and uh, they want to uh, add some networked uh, communication with the wastewater treatment plant, alarms, generator switches, and also um, uh, some, some, some backup uh, capabilities so that if things, in the event things went wrong, um, there, there are some systems in place to uh, keep the effluent from going into the lake. <coughs> and then up in uh, Ticonderoga, uh, uh, the, the town wants to make some upgrades to uh, roadside erosion and, and stormwater controls. Um, same thing with uh, Warren County DPW. We're going to work with them on identifying uh, some, some county roads in the watershed that, that, that could use some addressing as well. Um, so these are all being matched in some form or fashion by in-kind services or cash contributions by the uh, participating communities. Um, there's no outlay to the, to the counties so to speak uh, uh, for, for these projects. <laughs> That's all I have. Any I questions about Lake George? Is that part of the order on consent that the, that the village has in terms of reducing this uh, storm sewer? Uh, this storm is just something they've been wanting to do now for a while. Um, the the Escal Street, or is you're talking about? No, no, not that I'm aware of. Um, but it's been they've had a they had a sinkhole I think about two years ago on the road above. Um, they expect to. Are, are the things in the order on consent? If you know that uh, are, are have not been applied for by the village no, in terms of reduction of storm, storm no. water. Chris, I see the two words smart growth on the agenda. With the, as far as we're getting to that. We are getting to it. Okay. Thank you. So this is the next project. I don't know if Wayne wants to talk about it. This is a resubmit of a non-funded project from last year as well. Right. Um, this, this project uh, will be a town application that the, uh, we'll be assisting with, uh, preparing the application and assisting with the administration of it. Um, it's actually, uh, it didn't get funded last year because the um, state was a real particular about the language in the public hearing notice. So they didn't like something that was in the public hearing notice and so they never reviewed the application. Um, so this is uh, to replace some uh, ACP pipe with ductile iron um, down uh, on County Route 19 and also on uh, Route 9 in the Hamlet Pottersville. This was identified as a, a project through an engineering study that we had previously had funded uh, through the local waterfront program. Uh, we're going after community development block grant 
Uh, the town did an excellent job last year on doing income surveys to determine eligibility. Um, there's no required local match, and we'll be submitting this as part of the uh, CFA process. Uh, again, uh, North Creek, we are working with them. Uh, in a 2014 grant award uh, was funded the map and plan report for the creation of a sewer district. Um, and that, I believe, Andrea, is pretty well set to become a reality. And uh, we're looking, uh, the final report is being submitted. Uh, there's some surveying work being done to establish the meets and bounds description of the district. Uh, the town has committed $800,000 in cash uh, towards the preliminary, or the engineering, uh, it's not preliminary engineering, um, to undertake a, a public sewer for basically Circle Avenue and the, Ham and the Main Street Business District. Um, this is important to us from the perspective that Department of Public Works will is preparing a build application um, and we want to try to time all this so that when the streets are all being reconstructed in North Creek that we don't go back in a year later and rip it up and put in the sewer line. So we're, we're trying to, to get all the ducks in a row for um, if the county is successful in, uh, in securing uh, funding under the build program. The housing needs study, uh, Patricia will be preparing this. We'll use uh, funding also that is made available from uh, EDC and the county's LDC. Uh, and we'll be applying for $50,000 of federal money to be matched with uh, 20 or 30,000 of local funds, depending on, on what's actually available. Um, and that application, again, is part of the CFA. And that's an outgrowth of discussion here at the committee um, that we've had for years so um. okay this is a Chris project as well so I'll let Chris briefly talk about this one yeah I don't think we have a we don't have slides for each one of these right yeah okay yeah so we're, we're putting this for a number of uh, uh, climate smart certification actions uh, through this year's CFA uh, we the board uh, one last Wednesday uh, passed a few resolutions uh, one of them to become a, a registered climate smart community um, but we're looking to undertake uh, using existing staff resources in the planning department, GIS, um, emergency services, and soil and water conservation to uh, do a natural resources inventory, uh, basically compiling uh, uh, data related to natural resources and adding some information on how to use the information so we can help promote some sustainable development in, in the county. Um, undertaking a climate vulnerability assessment, uh, building off of existing uh, plans like the hazard mitigation plan, uh, but honing in on uh, uh, really the impacts that, that, that are anticipated to come from, from, from climate change, um, and then developing some, some uh, strategies for adapting to those changes. Um, looking to do a climate resiliency plan, looking at our plans and policies and projects it's looking how we can improve them based on uh, kind of where things are going. Um, and we're looking to, um, we, have an, we have a fleet inventory, but we're going to uh, work on putting that in a format uh, uh, that the DEC would like uh, so we can receive some certification points. And also to develop a heat emergency plan, identifying vulnerable populations in Warren County uh, that, that are susceptible to um, heat exposure and so on. Um, and then identifying areas where um, those folks can go during those, those heat events. So, and Chris, I mean, this is the precursor to being able to apply for capital funding for some of those projects Correct. that get identified in the plan. So this is the first step in, a, in the funding process. Okay. Um, so that's what we're applying for through the CFA at the end of July. Uh, the SMART Growth, um, the EC SMART Growth program um, is not part of the CFA. The applications <coughs> were due June 7th, and so we submitted three projects as part of this um, okay. grant application round, which Wayne and Chris worked on. The first uh, item that we did, um, the as part of the local waterfront program, uh, we looked at um, 
the feasibility of establishing a hiking trail from the town of Corinth and Saratoga County to the Hawes to the Upper Works uh, trailhead for the High Peaks. Um, that we had the public meeting on that in the town of Chester. It was very well attended. Uh, chairman was there. A number of other supervisors were there. Um, to move that forward, what we want to do is a uh, design workbook that says that, okay, the town of Chester wants to undertake part of the construction of this trail. Here's the design guidelines that DEC will accept that are uh, applicable within the park and give some generic um, uh, trailhead and trail cross-section uh, information and design work. So that's, uh, that would be uh, contracted out through the uh, RFP process. So um, the next one is we are currently working with the town of Horican under the um, LWRP uh, to have the, uh, that community included in the first wilderness program. Uh, and so right now there's a consultant on board that is updating the first wilderness plan specific to the town of Horican. Part of that process uh, when we started that was the town had identified the desire to update their strategic plan that was bid as part of the process and it was outside the scope of our funding capability so we have submitted that under the smart growth program the town is providing a thirty five hundred dollar cash match uh, towards that it's not required but uh, we needed to fill a hole in, in the program so. is it strategic plan or comprehensive plan it's, it's kind of a hybrid um, it, it, it is more of the the request was the st town strategic plan. Um, I believe, along with updating the first wilderness plan to include the town of Horican, it's going to be a blended uh, concept. So, and the last thing I'll let Sarah talk about, um, but we asked for staff funding uh, to undertake the Hamlet Mapper. Um, and Sarah, you want to talk about the ideas here? Sure. So. Um According to the local visitor centers, uh, one of the most requested items um, that they often have trouble filling is local maps. So this project involves actually making an online um, mapper for all of the Adirondack Hamlets. So this will include not just the first wilderness um, Hamlets, but, but also Lake George, Bolton, and Hague. Uh, we're planning to make Similar to the recreation mapper will be um, sort of an inventory of all of the resources available in each of the hamlets. So be able to look at businesses and restaurants and lodging and attractions and things to do in each of the hamlets. In addition to that, we're going to design a high quality um, poster for each hamlet that the hamlets can post in their kiosks and then have printed and distributed. So. Thank you. Just a quick question, Sarah. Uh, businesses turn over. How are we going to maintain this? Yes. Yeah. So we are. We asked for funding to cover staff time to update that um, in the second year, um, and then after that, we'll take it over. So we'll update it once a year, probably going into the summer season. Um, Amanda and I will survey <laughs> the local <laughs> chambers, probably, and then do updates as necessary. I also believe that county tourism uh, in their directory also uh, calls and, and communicates. So I, I think that combining yeah. potentially uh, county tourism folks and, and you yeah. on that would... Uh, yeah. We've had discussions help. with Joanne, yeah. Because okay, that is a huge task and it's important to have those things updated as Michael has uh, stated. Right. Mr. Chairman. Uh, that, that's, that's to be a great assistance. People come in and say, you know, we're going to go to do this, or we're going to go to do that, and then they say, well, how do we get there? And um, my question is, um, the, will this also tie to uh, uh, the better known mapping programs? Another three times, put the address in. You can actually plug the address. Yeah. In. So, like in the recreation mapper right now, it has the. Um, you know, you, there's a hyperlink they can click on, and it'll go right to Google Maps. So we'll have the same um, the same link in the in this mapper. And our intent is so we'll have this 
the recreation mapper, we're in the process of developing the cultural and historic mapper, which we'll do a presentation on probably at the end of the summer. Um, and then we'll have this new Hamlet mapper. Our intent is that we're going to, we'd like to combine all of those together into a native smartphone app so people could download the Warren County <laughs> Visitors app or whatever we decide to call it and it will have um, a full inventory of all of our local recreation opportunities, historic and cultural attractions, and then all of the uh, local businesses in each of the hamlets. Supervisor Leggett. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That all, all of this mapping is, puts Warren County ahead of a lot of other places. That is an excellent resource not to be underestimated. So thank you for all the work on it. It's going to provide great benefit in years to come. Supervisor Loeb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for any funding for this, if we're looking for public funding other than our own taxpayers, that's fine. But if it doesn't come across, we should just write a check. Because this is the type of thing that's going to bring money into this county. For a Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I agree. Okay. That's it. Well done. Thank you very much, Sarah. Oh, we Thank you very much, Wayne. Uh, any, any member of the public have any comments or suggestions? Uh, seeing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, Supervisor Hogan, second by Supervisor Strau. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. We're right on time, guys. Appreciate it.